Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Fennell and I'm your host on Live with Prima today. Uh, we are going to um, explore some of the Vintage Vanity Collection by Anna Dabrowska, aka Finnebear. She has come out with some fantastic uh, new products uh, as far as like, you know, she came out with great stamps, uh, a new paper pad, uh, and mechanicals, and a new line called Elementals, which is her canvas portion of her collection. And I'm going to try to focus a little bit on the mechanical side of things today, plus other stuff. You know, I'll touch base on everything. I've probably got way too much to do. But this really is a very straightforward project. But, you know, I have some kind of fun little tips and um, some techniques to share with you along the way. So this is the little tag book that I'm, it's not really that little, it's a tag book. And this is what I'm going to be creating today. And we're going to, I didn't put any pictures in it yet. But um, we're going to just talk about um, how to use some of these metals and how much fun they can be. And I used her one of her beautiful doily stamps. I don't know if you can see that. That's part of the reason why I didn't want to put photos on my project yet, because I wanted you to be able to see how certain things look uh, without the photos yet. So adding in the photos later will be a lot of fun. I love all of Finn's stuff too, Sunray. <laughs> Hi, Vanessa. Welcome to the show, everyone. So it's only about four pages long, but what's great about a book like this is that I could just keep going and keep adding pages if I want to. I can make it as, you know, as as big as I want or as little as I want. But I thought four would be good for the hour segment that we have. And of course, I prepped ahead of time so that you guys wouldn't have to watch me glue paper. But this is so. This is the this is what we're using today, and I'm really excited. Re thank you so much. Oh, Sharon was censored. I don't know what she said. <laughs> yes, the beautiful striped ribbon. It's it's by May Arts, and it's my very favorite. And I know I probably use it way too much. You guys are probably sick of seeing it, but I just it's my go-to ribbon, and I love it. All right. So yes, check out the Prima blog today because we have other examples of some fabulous projects that the girls made um, showing how they use the mechanicals in different ways. And even better is that uh, Thursday night, Jamie is going to be on here 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time, excuse me. And she's going to make some jewelry pieces with, with the mechanicals that she got. And I cannot wait. J Jamie is known for creating amazing jewelry. Even if you're not a jewelry maker, just come because I think that she's still going to be able to share some unique ideas with you on how to use these embellishments. You can make your own charms. You can make your own keychains. You can make your own dangles for your mini books and your layouts and things like that. So there's still a lot of valuable information in a class, even if it's not something you would normally make. Or maybe you'd like to dabble in some jewelry, or you do already. So, um, I ha But I highly recommend it. So it's kind of Mechanicals Week on Live with Prima. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pan down, and we're going to get started, okay? And I'm going to introduce the pro the products to you as we go, so you'll know exactly what I'm using. All right, and the puppy is nearby. Just to warn you, she's um, she could be grabbing things off off the chair next to me, and I, you may hear me yelling at her and stuff. But uh, she's asleep right now, so hopefully not. Okay, so the base of my project here is the Julie Nutting uh, tags. Now I tore off the cover. This isn't normally what it looks like. It usually has some pretty doll on the front and stuff. And, uh, it comes with like 48 tags in one uh, pack. And I know that seems like a lot, but you know what? You can make oversized tags for gift bags, use it as a, for a mini book. You can make a cute banner with these. Um, you know, the sky's the limit, and I know you guys could use them for cards, too. Uh, you're all very creative, and I can see you using these in several ways. And so for my book today, this was the base. So the front of the tag kind of has like a ledger cream color to it, um, really neutral and ready to go to add color and alter it any way you want. And the back is just plain white, and they are pretty sturdy, as you can see. Uh, I know you're going to ask me the length, and I, I honestly can't remember, and I'm going to measure it right now for you. So the length of this tag is about eight and a half inches, all right, and then it is three and a half inches um, wide, 
eight and a half inches long. So that's a pretty good size tag. It's really made to fit the doll stamps, which you know are larger. So that that's was really the base for it. And what I'm going to use today for paper is uh, Finn's A4 paper pad. Now this collection only came with an A4 paper pad, which for me is totally fine. Um, this is really a very neutral paper pad and palette. You can see some blues and some warm tones in there, like the light pinks and creams. And to me, this is just awesome because I love the, these colors and you can add darker colors to it to enhance the paper. But you'll see that the images are very, very much uh, like her Sunrise Sunset papers, um, but different color palette and new images, of course, but the same idea. So here's a map. I've used some papers out of this already. Here's another one. It looks like she put like masking tape across and made it like kind of a checker pattern. There's some stripes, some twill looking stripes, some music paper um, done in like that pretty teal with like a grunge uh, style background. Another plain white one. Let's see. So you get the drift. Oh, here's like an ad that she used. Um, it's all in Polish. And so you get the idea. It's just very basic, but this is perfect to work off of because you can add a lot of your own color and style and interest to it. So what I did was, I'm, I'm going to put my pretty project aside here. Oh, I want to fall on the floor is I actually covered the back sides because I like the ledger side. So you have this plain white side. And what I did was I just picked out, oh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's take out some of the blue music paper. Okay. And I grabbed some studio uh, multimedium. This is the gloss. It doesn't matter if you use gloss or matte because we're using it as a glue today. All right, not as a sealer. So I just put my paintbrush right into that and swiped the whole back of the tag. And just I was really generous and I made sure that I got the edges really well. Okay. Just like so. And then the back side of the A4 pad is also plain white. It is single sided, but you get three of each design that's in the pad. So I did plain side to plain side. Okay. Now you can take a bone folder or a brayer or something just to make sure that it's down really well, or you can just use your fingers like I am. And then I did this on four tags and I set them aside to dry. Once they were dry, I just took my scissors and cut it right out. That's it. And I do it off to the side because you want to be able to use the rest of the paper as you wish. Um, and you can see that you can get a couple tags out of one sheet. So, you know, you can make quite a few books uh, from the tag pack and also from the A4 paper pad. <clears throat> I have to I have to move things off as I go. So what I did was, I told you I already pre-cut some of these just to save time. So I used like the light blue that's in the pad. It kind of looks like a, a burlap pattern on the back and it's got a really pretty light blue tone to it and then you can see the Julie Nutting tag um, the ledger is on the other side okay does that make sense and then I also use the blue music paper as well um, this one is kind of a funky paper it had like all these cool stripes in the background which look like little bits of lace and then she colored some of it so what I did is I just did it from a corner. I don't mind that there's more color here and not so much up here. It doesn't really matter, but that's a personal preference. And then this one has, it looks like fabric with like little bits of lace that go across in the paper. And then she had the, the shading on this as well. Now, my go-to ink for this project was Distress Ink Vintage Photo. And I used my blending tool with my foam. And this color, this vintage photo, happened to match um, like kind of kind of what was going on around here pretty well. You can also use um, walnut stain. I think walnut stain would be really, really nice. And I just went along and I did all of the tags. I didn't bother to do the back because this album was designed to flip up. So 
you know, you're going to see the pretty paper on the bottom and the ledger on the top. And so it didn't really matter to me. If you want to ink the edges of the back of the tags, that's totally up to you guys. Okay. So I did four all together. Certainly have enough tags and paper to do a ton more if I wanted to. Now, what I did with the leftover papers after I cut my tags out, I made little rectangles. So you'll see some of the same patterns that I've used. And I cut them at three inches wide by six inches long. Okay, three by six. And I went along and inked all the edges of these as well. Okay. So that's you'll need as many as many rectangles as you have tags. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I already put foam tape on the back in honor of Frank. And I'm going to go ahead and start putting these down. Now, a little trick, because, you know, as you're moving along and putting down your rectangles and all that jazz, um, you want to make sure that the papers are lined up. Somewhat, not perfect. You won't be able to tell when you're flipping through the book. But it was just a little trick that I thought would help. So you see, I can I can do the first one and add it any way I want. Now I of course don't trust anything, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more fabric tack to the <laughs> to the sticky side of the foam tape because because uh, I want to because I want it to stay and never ever come off. So I'm going to kind of center this maybe a little bit more at the top, a little less at the bottom. Okay, so you want it just like that. And when I go to put my next piece down, I am going to line up both the tags and then just kind of eye it where I put the first one and use that as my, you know, as my sample as to where to put the next few so they all look, you know, Cohesive. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Because, you know, we, we would just start gluing them down, and then later on we'll, we're like, oh, my this one rectangle is higher than the one on this tag, you know, and so forth. And I don't know. I just, sometimes I catch myself and I think of these things as I go. So you can tell I just kind of kept this kind of neutral, this album itself kind of neutral. So I'm not spraying or adding a lot of color. But this paper is certainly meant to add your own personal touch to it if you wish, some of your own color. So see, now they kind of line up. All right, so that's what I was talking about. Let's see. Blue music note paper. This paper does not come in 12 by 12. It only comes in the A4 paper pad. Uh, I'm not sure why they did that, but that's how they did it. And the A4 paper pads are really kind of nice because it's not a huge amount of paper that you're getting. It's enough. Plus, I think that the, all the backgrounds were so neutral that it just made more sense to offer it as like a pack rather than trying to sell them individually. Does that make sense? If not, I'm sorry. Oh, make sure your uh, music papers go in the correct way. That's important. Looks good. So far, so good. And one more. So again, I inked all the edges of the tags, inked all the edges of the paper. And then we can get going on our, our I don't know, the cover of our mini book. Right there. Okay. So that was pretty easy. So remember, three inches by six inches. That's all you need. And for my cover, I'm going to use, let's see, um, I'm going to use this one. We'll get started on that. Already making a mess here. Sorry. I put things down so Poppy can come over and start eating everything. All right. So I took that awesome, beautiful um, ribbon that I love. It's by May Arts. It's their black and cream striped ribbon. I have seen their, I've seen the ribbon on Amazon, but um, a lot of uh, local stores carry it as well. Let's see, now that's what I want to do. 
So I'm going to fold the end of the ribbon together. I'm going to go from the outside in and cut myself a little, little notch there at the bottom. And I think this is about, this is going to end up being about seven inches or so. And I'm going to take my little mini, my tiny attacher. I can't call it a mini stapler. That's not what it is. I'm going to fold down the top and just kind of give it a little staple it just to give it a nice finished look at the top, just like that. Can you see that? All right, I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. And I'm using Fabri-Tac to glue it down with, maybe. I think it's clogged. Hold on a second. It's 90 degrees out here today. Can you believe it? Yesterday, the high was 66. So bizarre. I don't know where the heat's coming from, but I have the air on. So I'm putting this ribbon piece here kind of off to the side. All right. Uh oh. There we go. Just smooth that down. There. That's a great start. Now, what I also wanted to show you guys was one of Finn's new doily stamps. This stamp is so pretty. There's so much detail to it. It's just like a mini doily uh, at your disposal. You can use it as many times as you want. And I'm going to rip it off the index here and put it on my clear lock. I wanted to show you guys. So I'm going to use, I'm going to flip through the pad and just grab one of the planer pieces. I'm just clicking on this so it doesn't shut off on me. Let's see. Ah, so something like this. This is like pretty simple, neutral, pretty. And I used, because I have four pages, I used it consistently throughout the mini book. So I'm going to use the vintage photo again and give it a good inking. And what I would do for this project, it's okay if it doesn't come out perfect. It doesn't have to look perfect. Actually, the less perfect it looks, the better. And make sure that your ink is nice and juicy too because that also helps. If it's kind of dried out, it's you're not with a detailed stamp like this, you're not going to get as good of an image. So I stamped four of these guys all on this sheet. Right. And then dun, 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 I cut them out. I wasn't careful when I cut them out, I just cut them out. So I think I have way more than I need. I only needed four. So you can see I just cut out that image with scissors. I wasn't careful. I just kind of did a little scallop around the edge, followed the stamp image, and that was it. Add foam tape to the back and ink the edges with the distress photo. That's perfect. Oh wait, I want to add one more thing before I add this. I just cut like a half inch strip from some of my leftover pieces, from one of the plain pieces, because I wanted to add just a little bit, another little banner here for my uh, background, this cover. And I'm just kind of cutting this little, I'm just cutting those little notches out. Let's see, I got it right here to here. Good. I really should lay my glue down on the side so that it's ready to come out when I want it to. I should ink the edges of this too, but I'm not going to. It doesn't matter. That might even be a little bit high. So you know what? I think I'm going to cut it into two separate pieces and bring it down a little bit. You guys ever do that? Decide to chop something off right now before you glue it down. There we go. So I've just got a little banner 
going along the ribbon. And I'm going to add one of my cute little doilies right here to the center. Oh, and I have washi tape too. This is from the Sunrise Sunset Collection. And the washi tape, it's, um, I haven't been naming the number, sorry, 564872. If you guys are looking for the complete list of everything I use today, it is on the Prima blog, uh, prima.typepad.com. I listed it there. I also listed it on Facebook. I like to tear off just some little pieces of tape and just add little touches here and there. So like up here, I think I'm just going to, probably should have done this before I glued down the ribbon. That's okay. It's just really cute. It says smile and fun and it just looks like, like a little ruler with words Oop, upside down. You see that? It says I love you, smile, joy. It's just really cute tape. bit to the bottom. I don't know, a little bit of tape equals a little bit of happiness. Don't you agree? There. Oh gosh, that's terrible. That's so crooked. There we go. Yeah, I should have added that first, but I didn't. So that's okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add my doily. Take out all these tape pieces. So I added like ribbon, the stripe is a ribbon, and then a paper banner with the ribbon. So I have a little bit of both. And when I add this, I'm going to add it just kind of off to the side just a little bit. All right. And I think that that looks kind of cute just the way it is. Maybe I could even move it up a little bit. Yeah, I can move it up a little bit. There, that's perfect. So see, I have it placed there. Now, before I get too ahead of myself, I do want to show you some of the mechanicals that we have. Now, some of these are a little, not as thick as others. And like you look at a package like this, this one has some gears in it. It has like a little spring in this inside of this little one here. I know it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to try to angle it. Can you see that spring without the glare of the light? Okay, and then I've got, um, here, let me fix this light here. And then I've got, you know, just some interesting pieces. And this one here has like a really pretty like filigree kind of emblem with uh, some more gears and buttons and things like that. All right, and what I'm talking about being either thinner or thicker, some of these are thin enough to use your crop a dial and punch a bigger hole through. And some are not. Okay. So this pack here is 961060. And the name of it is um, oh geez, I can't remember. Hold on a second, let me look. Apologize. Uh, 960960. Washers. Okay, so this is the washer set. So in the washer set, they tend to be a little less thick. So I'm going to take my crop a dial and I'm going to go with the bigger hole on the side and I'm going to punch larger holes right through the center. There's already a hole in the middle of these because these are meant to all connect and you can connect them with jump rings, you can connect them with brads, you can layer them with brads and that sort of thing. And what I wanted to do by punching a larger hole, I'm going to actually put them over the holes of my tags to finish off the look. So they're going to look like cool little emblems. So see, those all went through like butter. And this set, okay, this set, if I can open it, this is my favorite part, it's just dumping stuff out. The puppy will be here to eat the packaging soon anyway. So, See, there's like a little gear here, and this one tends to be on the thinner side, so I am going to be able to punch through that. But, like, here's one. Here's one of the gears with, like, some, like, it has, like, kind of, like, a jagged edge, like, teeth. They look like teeth. This one's a little bit thicker, 
So this one I cannot punch through with the crocodile, no matter how hard I try. Well, I could try probably really hard, but I'd break my crocodile. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to break things. This one, the little spring came, comes right out. You can put it back in. But for this, I can punch a hole through this one, barely. What I mean by barely is I can just do it without breaking it. There, I really put the crocodile to the test, didn't I? And here's another one with like, it looks like um, something you'd see in your in your uh, sink, like a, you know, stops things from going down the drain. What are those called? <laughs> All right, so I was able to punch holes in most of them. And my whole goal is to finish off the top part of the tag. This is where it's going to go. It's going to go right over the existing hole at the top of your tag. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh gosh, my glue. I'm going to go ahead and then put that down at the tops. There we go. So with all of these that I've collected and punched holes in, I'm going to finish them off. So I'm making like my own Oh, what's the word? I can't think of that word today. Reinforcer. <laughs> I love how that just came to me. And so you have really, it really dresses up these tags. And it does reinforce the holes even more so to make them look really finished. So isn't that pretty? And I love that you can use your crocodile to put a hole in stuff. That's my favorite. And I personally like the metallic colors that they come in, so that didn't bother me one bit. I thought it looked fine with these papers. So see, I'm just fixing the hole. Now, if you want to, you can go right ahead and do the back as well. Because, you know, when you're flipping up the album, you can see the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that to some of these. So you can do both sides, or you can just do one side. That's, it's, um, it's optional. It's optional, ladies. But it just really made it. And what's even better is that if you didn't want the metallic look at all, you can you can gesso these and then paint over them. I do recommend gessoing because the gesso will allow the, the paint to stick to the metal even more so. And that really is a good thing when you're working really hard on a project and you want it to look good. Alcohol inks would work great on these. Copics would work great on these. Anything that you can use to color the metal would look awesome. Okay, I'm missing. I need one more. Here's one more. Nope, that's too thick. So, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was a cool idea. Oh my gosh. And it's okay if you can see, like if you have a larger one on the back side, it's okay if you can see it poking out through to the front. Just make sure you put the glue in like the center part so that the glue doesn't show when you flip it back over at like, oops, this part here on the top. See how it kind of, see how you can see part of it showing through? Yeah, so you want to just make sure you don't put any glue there. I'm just going to press this down so that I make sure that the glue stays. It is being a pain. All right. And then that little spring, I'm going to put that little spring back in here. But you know what I'm going to use? I'm going to use um, the multi-medium. Simply because the Fabri-Tac glue is a little bit thicker and you will be able to see it. But if I use the multi-medium, uh, even if I goop it on and get a little too much, it won't show once it dries. It dries clear, which is really awesome. Now the thing is, is I have to reload that spring in there. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. So I hope that was pretty cool trick. I don't know. You guys probably already thought of that. You're all so creative. Quick Grip is a, a glue that is really strong and made for metal. It's like an E6000. Uh, it's, oops, it's going to, um, like stick metal to metal. What, that's what Quick Grip is. It's made by Beacon, which also makes Fabri-Tac. So it's 
it's heavy duty. I thought I, oh, I brought some down. Here it is. Quick grip. So it comes in a tube like this. It smells god awful, but man, I'll tell you what, once this, once something dries, it will never, ever, ever come off. So I could have used quick grip, but I chose not to today. <laughs> I don't know why, but I, that's definitely an option for me. Okay, I'm going to set my doilies off to the side. So while my little reinforcers are all drying to my pages that I've just put on, I wanted to um, go over another cool trick with you guys, and it involves some more mechanicals. So here's a pack of mechanicals. It's just another example. And this one has like leaves and little branches and cool little images, right? And this is 961046. And I am going to color these because I like the metal look on some things, as you saw the reinforcers I did. But I really want to color these green. And I'm going to show you a cool trick. Well, I hope it's cool. I hope you like it. All right, so this will involve some clear embossing powder. Um, I use super fine detail embossing powder by Ranger. It's clear. Okay, and I have my little embossing um, powder tray. And I'm also going to take the chalk edge or olive vine. Okay, and I'm going to color the olive vine right to the metal. And I'm really going to dab it on there pretty good because I really want that green to show through. Plus, these are all different shades of metal. Jack, can you close the door up there, please? And I'm just going direct to the metal with this green. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but you guys will have to trust me just for a second. Now, my whole main goal for this is just to add some of these metals and some leaves that I'm going to add to my project. And it's easier just to get them all done at once. There's no sense in messing around. Just do them all at once. Will I use them all? Maybe. Maybe not. But you know what? <clears throat> I will find a place for them. I shall. All right. So I've got those all colored, and I really inked them up really good. I'm going to take my towel here and just clean this off. I know I will have a catastrophe later if I don't clean that off. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle this super fine embossed powder on here. It doesn't have to be even. It just has to be enough where there's like a light coating that will make it look like enamel and keep the color. And you get that shiny enameled look as you go. Okay. So now I can pull these out. I'm pulling these out by the, like the little stem parts if I can so that I don't take the embossing powder and ink off when I touch it. I'm not tapping the excess powder off. I don't care about that. That can stay on. I don't mind. All right. And I'm going right to my craft mat with these little guys. I'm going to set this aside for now. And I'm going to go ahead and heat some of these. Now you can start to see when. Um, you can definitely tell when the uh, embossing powder has set because it goes shiny onto the metal. Now, if you wanted to do this um, with a colored embossing powder, you could do that. I would recommend that you use a, you know, a an ink for embossing and that it can be used on metal. Like I know our pigment chalk inks can can be used on the metal so that's like no problem. So if I were going to do like a colored embossed powder, I would just do um, probably the Distress Emboss Ink Pad. Now don't touch them, okay, because you'll burn your fingers because they're very hot right now. The metal takes in all the heat. 
right? So you don't want that. So don't touch it. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to do another fun little trick. Um, I love these copper flowers that, that Anna came out with with the Sunrise Sunset Collection. So they are paper flowers. Some come on stems and some come just as roses. Okay, so there's the mini roses in copper and then I'm using the roses in copper. Okay, and the numbers for that is 565213 for the mini and 565220 for the larger roses. All right, so now I'm going to take an ink called Turquoise Stone. This is Chalk Edger Turquoise Stone. Now, last time I did something like this for you guys on the show, but I'm going to take it a step further. Now, I'm going to go ahead and dab some of that ink right onto the edges of the petals, right? And since I have my fine embossing powder out, I'm going to dip my flower right into that little container of embossing powder. And this I will tap off some of the excess because I don't need it to be super thick. And then I'm going to go ahead and emboss the tips of the flowers just to make it look a little like coated and sugary and shiny. You don't want to do it for too long because you'll start, you'll catch the flower on fire. Okay. And I don't want to hear any fire stories on Facebook about how Gary showed you how to add heat to your flowers and they caught on fire. Okay, so I don't know if you can catch that, but see how it gave the flower just a little bit of an enameled look, kind of shiny. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's a great selection of sizes for flowers. So you can get the large and the small and then mix them together. All right, I'm going to dip that in again. Tap off the excess because the embossing powder is just going to stick where the ink was. All right. So they kind of look just like shiny already because they're copper, but then the, there's like added shine to it by um, just coloring the tips and adding that little bit of fine. Um, clear embossing ink to it. Pretty cool. Yeah, no burn, no, no burning, no burning. Now I'm going to go through, and I'm going to do this large guy. Now obviously I can't dip it into um, my canister, right? That's okay because you can just use your tray and just make a little. Just make a little pile of it and then just kind of sprinkle the flower in around it. Okay, I'm going to tap the back of the flower. Now this particular rose, as you can see, is a little different than this one because I removed the middle and I'm going to show you why in a sec. Now, do you remember when I was getting out all the mechanicals, there was this pretty like filigreed emblem and it's got like four little uh, loop, little scallop edges on it. So what I did is I took this, it's literally, it's bendable. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to bend up those scalloped parts just like this so that it becomes dimensional and kind of curled. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add this as the center of my flower. Because with these flowers, it's really easy to remove parts of them. Like, you see this rose here? I can separate some of the petals like this, and then I can just kind of pull them apart, and then I get two different flowers. So you kind of, you can get more out of one flower. So you have something like this and then I added just that filigree center to the middle. You know, and once the glue dries, I can even pop it up more. And then I'm going to take, let's see, 
There's also little tiny washers that came in the mechanicals, and I can stick him in the center, which I think I will. Stick that in the center, just to add another layer. And then I can also take some Satan crystals. My Prima has all these beautiful Satan crystals that are faceted and multicolored. And I'm going to add I'm gonna add one of these to the center. So I think I'm going to add this one of these guys here. And I'm going to add a little more glue to it, even though because it, it does have adhesive on the back. And I've just made my own kind of custom flower. Turquoise stone. Yes, the chalk edger that I'm using right now, that blue, is turquoise stone. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside to dry as well. Okay, so, and these are these are good to go. Yep, they're nice and cool. Let's see, what, what am I going to do next? Ah, I know. We also have some wooden words that we came out with. This is called the wood icons and it came with a box of words. And I actually used one of the words as the title for my front page of this mini album. And I really did the exact same thing um, that I just did to the flowers. I'm going to add a, the darker turquoise stone and then I'm going to go over it with pastel blue. This is pastel blue chalk edger. And I'm just going to lightly touch down with this because I want different shade, um, shades. Okay, So it's going to have kind of multicolors. That's what's great about these is that you can add a light to a dark. You don't have to go from light just to dark. The light will go over the darker color. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And then I'm going to dip it into that pile of embossing powder. And I'm going to... Now, what if you do that and you abs and like you get your color and you're like, oh, I hate it, or it doesn't match what I'm doing? Take your ink, like say the green, go back over it with a different color, add the embossing powder again, and you can do a different color. You don't, you didn't just waste, you know, one of your embellishments. You can go over it. I'm gonna give a little cool off there, and I am going to. What's my blending tool? Has anyone seen my blending tool? Hopefully the puppy did not make off with my blending tool. Oh, no, here it is. And I'm going to take the vintage photo, and I'm just going to kind of shabby it up a little bit. Now, I could have shabbied it up um, before I put the embossing powder on. However, the permanent, the pigment ink on here would have come off onto here onto my pad, so I didn't want the contamination. And this will fit nicely in all the little groups and stuff. So there you have it. You have a little bit of love. And I highly recommend, if like you guys can buy the multi-pack of these inks, I use almost every color because it like the colors all match everything that you're doing. So it's like it's wonderful. Okay. Now, let's see. Oh, next. These are called pendants, I believe. And in here, now these are deceiving. Just looking at them online, like if you looked at this package, it'd be deceiving. There are eight pieces in here, not four, which some people might actually read the packaging and know that, but I wouldn't. And they come like nested like this. And so they're actually dimensional. So there's about a, a quarter of an inch um, of depth in the centers. And then the outside centers are, are uh, petaled. And there's also a hole in the center and a hole up here. There's a hole in the center of most of the mechanicals because the idea is to nest them together and then take brads and connect them all. So you have a way to connect them if you decide to layer them without glue. Okay. So here's the one I used in the front. It's larger. And you get four different sizes, of course. Of course. And all I did, because there's already a hole like right here, I just took a little bit of seam binding. The seam binding I had colored um, with some tattered rose 
distrusting. I just took the dabber. You guys have seen me do it online with Prima lots of times. I love to color my own seam binding. And this seam binding is called camel hair. So it's like comes in a cream color. And then when you add a color to it, it'll look antique -y or like kind of, you know, aged. If you, if you buy a white seam binding, it's going to be the true color of whatever you add to it. Does that make sense? Oops. So I'm actually stringing the seam binding through the little hole here at the top. And I put a cute little bow. Because I love bows. Okay, so that's what I love about all these little options. Now, you can take your crop dial I think, and punch a hole in it yourself, but you don't need to. And I say I think because I don't, you know how sometimes it can only reach so far into things, so it's not always easy to do, but I think I could probably do that. So I just tied a little bow on there, and I'm going to put my love in the center. You can use any word you want. You can use um, an alphabet, alphabet stickers, something like that. And I'm going to go right in the center here. And I did that on purpose because I want my bow like kind of off to the side. Okay. And where is my, aha. So remember we started this little page here. So this is going to go right over the doily. And it pops out. It's totally dimensional. It's right up my alley. Now, I could have colored this pendant, absolutely. But like I said before, like the colors of the metal are fine. They totally match this. But what would I use? I would use a you know gesso with some acrylic paint. I would use alcohol ink. I would use uh, Copics. Uh, even spray paint. You know, you can take these things outside and get like your favorite color in a spray paint can and go nutty. Yes. All right. So far, so good. Oh gosh, it's already 2.48. How can that possibly be, you guys? How can that be? All right. So I have another uh, product here called Elementals from Finnebear's line. This is a cream colored canvas with black resist on it, okay? What I did is I added, I'm going to take it right out of the package and show exactly what I did. Just like this. I'm going to prime it with a little bit of water just to get it so that it will take your art medium a little bit better. Instead of just sitting on top, it'll kind of soak in. And I have two distressed stain colors. I have uh, crushed olive and I have peeled paint. So crushed olive I added first. It's kind of, they're two different toned greens and I don't care how I add it on here. I'm just being really, really sloppy, right? Really sloppy. Then I'm going to add the peeled paint. The peeled paint is a little bit of a different tone of green. It's a little bit darker, as you can see, and I'm not being really careful. And every time you press down on your distress stain, it's going to release some color, right? So now you've got like two tones going on. And then I'm going to take a baby wipe. And the baby wipe is going to actually help me blend the two colors together right on the canvas. Now, the baby wipe is not absorbent. It'll only take a minimal amount of color off. See, it's not soaking right into the baby wipe. But it's blending the two colors perfectly. And any bare spots that I have, it's going to bring the ink over into the bare spots. Okay. Just like that. So you can see that it's starting to blend in. And when it dries, it's going to be much lighter. Like this. So... It's very, the two tones are very subtle, and yet they work. All right, so prepare my leaves. I'm going to cut this baby in half. Well, actually a third. Now, I did color the back side as well because I'm making leaves. So if I have any leaves sticking out in my book, I want it to look green on both sides, not white on one side and green on the other. Because this distress stain will not soak through. I'm actually going to bend it in half. And I'm going to get my big shot out. And this is the Prima 
the Prima uh, Sizzix die. These are the leaves. Okay, yes, Prima came out with Sizzix dies. And I'm going to lay that double folded canvas right on there. And I'm going to run it through. This is so much easier standing up. Oh, wait a minute. It worked. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta do it this way. I gotta do it this way. There we go. Okay. So, I'll pull it up. And now I have really pretty printed leaves on canvas. And see how the green tones, it doesn't really matter because you're cutting them out in little leaves. All right, and these are going to be the leaves that I add to the project. All right, so I'm having a lot of fun with all of my inks and my metals and everything like that. And I'm going to go ahead and start adding some of my embellishments to this page now. So first I'm going to add, let's see, I didn't color all of my flowers yet, so bear with me. I'm just going to kind of, you saw how I embossed them and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue these down. Emma should get this die for sale, like absolutely, for you Canadian Cornwall people. We have some really exciting news coming up too, um, speaking of Canada, but I can't spill just yet. I know. I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just, I'm just trying to be with you guys. Just trying to be honest. But there is some very exciting news regarding Canada and Prima. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't spill, but I will as soon as I can. You know, I have a big mouth, and I will shout it to the world. Okay, I'm adding these little white flowers. Sometimes it's okay to add them white. I don't mind not coloring them. They want you to keep going. Okay, I'm going to keep going as far as I can, you guys. So these little flowers are called Little Missies. Little Missies are new, and the number is 571689. And I'm going to tuck these in around my copper flowers. They just add a bit of brightness. And with the wet glue, I can easily pick things up and tuck them under and and so on and so forth. Okay. I'm going to add another little, I'm going to grab another little copper rose and a little white flower. Oh my gosh. I've made such a mess. This is so fun. And I can, can I still move this one over? No. Too late. I'm going to move my ribbon off out of the way. I'm just going to tuck in some more little flowers there at the top. Let's see here. There we go. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. Scrapbooking upside down. I've not done it in so long. Okay, so you can see the flowers so far. I'm just kind of clustering them all together. Oh, I want this one kind of up and over. I want him right there. Okay, so you can see where this is the middle of that bigger flower I took apart. So I, I just stuck the center part that I took off right there. Now, I'm going to grab some of my leaves that I've prepared. This is so fun because it's so customizable. You can make it any way you want and any colors you want. Um, which for me is a lot of fun actually. There we go. Now, do you remember that one of the little metals that I had embossed and colored? I'm going to take one of those little guys and tuck them here right with my leaves, my other, my canvas leaves. So you have a little mixture of canvas and metal together. That makes it a little more fun. And you know, I, I'm going to, later on after the show, I'm going to go upstairs and just cut out a ton of, ton of leaves on my die. I'm just going to do that because I love leaves. Like, I love using leaves on all my projects. And Prima just cannot keep up with my demand. 
So I've now made my own <laughs> with my new Sizzix Prima Dye and my Big Shot, and I'm just going to go to town. Okay, so th so far so good. Looks cute. Now, in the mechanicals, I want to say that there's other, like, little, hmm, let's see, let me get another one. This one here. So this one is, like, thicker metal. There's, like, embossed pretty, you know, images. If you don't mind, I'm just going to grab some of these because what I like to do is take some of these guys here and I just put glue right on them and I like to tuck them in with my flowers. Just like that. So, like, this guy can go right, let's see, where do I want him to go? decisions decisions I can kind of tuck him in between my flowers and just sticking out just a little bit I'll show you I'll do it up close so see where I put that metal there and I put one of the little ones right here and then I can also take those crystals like you saw earlier and I can pull a couple of those off and just stick them right in the middle of the mechanicals and voila they are little instant homemade embellishments. Okay, just like that. Now, one more neat thing that I did on here, and I didn't think of this idea myself. I will give credit to Kazia. Do you guys know Kazia? I know I'm saying her name totally wrong. Okay, so there's also some of these jump rings that came with the Sunrise Sunset collection from Finn. And the jump rings are meant to basically hold all of these metal pieces together. And what I love that I saw she did on um, she did it on a canvas, I think, here on Live with Prima. See, I get to watch all the shows and see all the cool stuff that everybody does. And um, she used these just to sprinkle onto her canvas. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's so cute. So I'm doing it too. She has great ideas. She's actually going to be on again in um, October. Sorry, I'm just pinching these all together because they come separated. She's going to be on again for three more shows with us for Live with Prima, and her next show will be in October. I'm just trying to pinpoint a date for her. Now I'm going to use the multi-medium, and I'm just going to dab it in here and lay it down where I want it. So it's like putting little circles, like little added metal circles, which match all the metals you already have on here. I want to just use the end of my brush to make sure that stays. What's great about this multimedium, like I said before, is that it's going to dry clear. So even if it looks like all gunky, like I've got a bunch of glue on it, no worries. She's so clever. She's a clever girl. And you see, like, her mixed media style may not be somebody else's style, but she had something really cool to offer, a cool idea. And I'm going to implement that idea into this project because I love that idea. Because she's so gifted. Yeah, I know. This is, this is painful to watch. But I can just set that down, and I'm going to not touch it anymore and I'm just going to let it dry. Okay, so you can see on the original book, these are dry. You see them up here, where I just sprinkled a couple up here, and then I sprinkled a couple down below. Pretty cool, huh? So that was just like a fun little added thing, and all the metals match, so it matches the metal look that we're going for. And I'm going to call it done. Now, if I didn't get a chance to color the leaves or the, the flowers and I didn't emboss, I can just go on and just add the color even though the flowers are already glued down. Like if you forget or you decide that it needed color, you can add this. I'm just not going to emboss. I'm just going to color. Just like that. Okay. And so I think for now, that is finished. Right? Did I add everything I was supposed to add? I think I did. Yay. Okay. You guys wanted me to keep going. I can do that. Uh, let's see. 
The next one's pretty straightforward. I have this one here. It's the blue background with like kind of the pink center. And I have another May Arts ribbon that I love, which is like this gingham uh, ribbon. It's black and cream. And I'm going to cut off a chunk for myself. <laughs> yes, move to the U.S. We'll help you with your pre-med diction for sure. Hold on, guys. I just got to get some glue out of my way. All right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to wrap my ribbon around this whole thing and tie a cute little bow. So I can see myself making a bunch of these for Christmas, you know. And the cool thing is, is like I said, everything's so neutral. You guys could really use a lot of um, different colored flowers for this. Whatever you have on hand, you know. And the metals are so fun and they add just such a cool touch to everything that um, I think it just makes it all the more fun to play with and work with. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add my doily. I'm working as fast as I can to get through these. But what's cool is I showed you most of the techniques already. Now it's just assembling our project and making it all look pretty. And we're tucking things in here, tucking things in there, and having fun with everything that we've colored. Right? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put that right here. All right. And I did add another little seam, seam binding bow. Like sometimes it's fun to layer uh, ribbons. So I made that cute little bow, and I'm going to make another little bow on my bow with the seam binding. And we got some more copper flowers. Uh oh, that's way too long. I'm going to add one to the top of this bow here. And then these little guys, remember these little guys? Let's see, these little pendants, like how they came in different sizes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add. I'm going to add one of the mechanical, like, little, pretty little button with a flower on it to the center. Most of these, yep, fit together. So that's awesome that they all work together. And then I think I might add another little tiny one that was in that pack within that, too, just to make it look interesting. And then I'm going to add another little... crystal right there. So it looks just like a little, I don't know, collage of things. And I'm going to put that right here under my bow. Okay. And I'm going to add another little mini rose. Oh, my leaves. I got a couple leaves. That's what I love about wet glue is you can like kind of lift up and tuck. And then I'm going to add one of those little metal leaves in here too. Why not? All the metals on metals look so pretty together. It just adds to your cluster. It adds to the texture of everything. I'm going to do one more little rose down here. Oh, let me color him first with the turquoise stuff. 
Oh, great. Got glue all over my hand. That's all right. So you can see that little cluster with the ribbons, and that was kind of fun. So you know your photo is going to go right, right in here. And then I did take, um, oh, I did, I did glue another metal piece down to my original one. So I'm going to do that now. Ah, there we go. I'll have that kind of sticking up there. And I got to wipe off my hands. like that. You know, once everything's dry, then I can fuss around with my bow and all that jazz. Okay, so that one's done. And I can sprinkle the jump rings around, which I already showed you how to do. But I can show you on my original one that, see the little jump rings like up here and then also down, down here toward the bottom. Just to kind of cascade those. Okay. All right, I'm going to try to get through as much as I can here. Let's see. All right, the next one. Okay, I'm going to add another little strip of uh, that May Arts ribbon to the center. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that down just to the very top. So I'm adding a little glue to that top piece of paper. I'm going to center it, bring my glue down the middle. Just like that. Okay. Now, before it dries, I can kind of bend it. Oh, that's not a very good one. Oh no, this one's a little goopy. Oh well, that looks fine actually. So I've got it right down the center. And I like to run my hands along the ribbon just to make sure that, because these are stripes, so you want to make sure they don't look all crooked. So sometimes it's good to work the glue underneath it to straighten it out a little bit so that you're, it doesn't look like this. <laughs> all right, I'm going to add another one of my doilies. So I think like for photos, I would probably do a little bit smaller than the wallets. I would probably do whatever the next size down is. Like I have a program on my printer that allows me to choose different sizes. And I think, I don't think it's the passport size, but I think it's a little bit, just a little bit bigger than that. Okay. And you remember our really pretty flower we put together? with that filigree in the center. We're going to go ahead and put that down. Right here at the top. And I'm going to put a couple of those little white flowers around it. Let's see, like up here. Is anybody getting bored yet? Oh! Oh yeah, micro beads would be fun inside. Like that's what's great about these little things here is that you can make your own little, you can put all kinds of little beads in there, little, all kinds of fun little tchotchkes. Okay. Fun little thingies. Go ahead, this is what we got. I have many roses. Where is the ribbon from you want it? Um, the ribbon is from May Arts. May Arts makes it. And um, I saw May Arts on Amazon. But you can also Google search the web and just search May Arts. This is called Ivory. Let's see, what's this called? Well, it doesn't have the name on it. It's uh, RG-5-10. And I believe it's the Ivory Black 
striped row grain ribbon. Let's see, a couple leaves, of course. We need to add some leafage. And I'm going to do that to, oops, tuck that in. Like my ribbon, um, I have always gotten from my local scrapbook store, um, my LSS. But my LSS went out of business last February or March, which was really sad because we had such a great community of women there. And um, very, very creative, kind, sweet, amazing women that would come in and, you know, you would talk to and chat with. I'm going to add a metal piece and then another metal piece. So I'm getting a lot of use out of these metal leaves that I had embossed. Gosh, can you hear the dog? She's upstairs. The boys are home from school now and they are chasing her around upstairs. So see, I just kind of clustered all my little flowers together and added like the metal leaf here. I added a little metal leaf here with my canvas leaf as well. Oh geez. And I just dipped it in my glue. So that one was pretty easy, straightforward. And I might even add another, let me add another little metal piece, another little, why not? I'm just going to tuck it in right here. Sharon's going to kill me. She wants to be done. She has work to do. <laughs> there we go. See? And this is the original one. And again, I had, um, you can add as many leaves as you want, as much foliage. And then I dotted those little uh, jump rings around too. Okay. Okay, last page. Last page. Here it is. Oh, leave. I still have plenty of leaves. Okay. Last page. I have to look and see what the heck I did because I don't remember. Ah. All right. I got the gingham ribbon out again. The um, number on this one is AKB10. This is the gingham black and ivory ribbon from May Arts as well. You know, I don't work for May Arts or with May Arts, but I just know that I love their their ribbon. Alright, so again I'm just tying a bow around the whole thing like I did for the last page I had this on. Give it a little snip. Okay. And then you can also just add a little bit of a touch of glue underneath your underneath your ribbon just to make sure that it stays in place because sometimes they like to move around when you're trying to work and get something done. All right, and then our last doily. I don't know. So what do you guys think about the metals? I really like how they give it like, I'm right for once. <laughs> um, the metals give it kind of a rustic feel, which I really like. And I like how you can mix and match. Like, not all of these metals are the same metal tone. Like, some are bronze, some are silver or pewter. Some are, you know, there's really no brassy. It's like bronze, pewter. What is the other one I can't think of? I don't know. I can't think right now. So I'm just going to add my doily just like that. And I think I'm going to add, oh, let's see, I'm going to add a metal, the, uh, like a little mechanical metal, looks like a button. Oops. And I'm going to add that right to the center of my bow, right from the get-go. Why not? Just like that. And then a copper flower. I know I'm not really co coloring these flowers. I'm just trying to get through here, through the all the pages for you guys. But I can go back and color them later. They don't all have to be embossed, obviously. I did that as a technique for you. But um, if you just forget to do that and you're adding your flowers, you saw me adding color to it as I went, which is totally fine. So I hope you got that part. Add another 
far up here. Uh oh, my screen, my screen. Okay, okay, good. Sometimes, I, you know how your screen shuts off automatically when you're not using it? Mine does that sometimes during the show because I get working on what I'm doing. And um, yeah, I forget to kind of scroll over the screen a little bit so my computer doesn't do the automatic sleep mode. That's not good. <laughs> That's definitely not good. Let's see. I'm just looking at my original, make sure I don't miss a beat. So we'll put that there. We'll put our little white flower here. Tuck in a couple of our leaves. Put one up here. Aren't that, isn't the die awesome? But I just love the, I just love the fact that you can cut your own canvas with it and get a new use for the canvas. Right, I'm gonna really have to, that's a big leaf. So, so far looking good. Excellent, excellent. And then, oh, I want to show you one more metal. This is another metal set. It's called Plate and Labels. It's uh, 961121, and there's words on it, like art and lucky and journey. And I love this piece right down here, and I'm going to go ahead and add this little, this little plate right here to just the top, just to add a little accent. And I also have some, oh, I haven't been using my washi tape. That's great. I add a little washi tape to the top. Uh, the washi tape you can always add later. You know, if you forget to add washi tape, it's not the end of the world. Is it, people? Yeah. It's not. So this, again, this metal I could have colored, but I didn't feel the need to. I just want it right there at the top. I think it looks kind of pretty right there. And I'm going to go in and, what the heck, where's my, oh, I'm going to go in and touch up those copper flowers, add my color, there we go, and voila, it is done. What do you think? Done, 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 done. And here's the original one. Looks pretty much the same. Oh, I added a couple of pieces of uh, little banners at the bottom. So you can always do that. All I did was take um, some of my scrap papers, cut some little strips. Let's see if I can find that color. And the heck is it? I don't know. Well, anyway, you get the drift. Actually, I have some. Tag I made earlier, so I'd say about a half a half an inch. Chop it off. Cut a little little notch. Cut a couple little pieces, and then stagger them at the bottom. That is it. That's all you need to do. Great way to use up your scrap pieces of paper, I tell you. Why not? It just added, it looks like faux ribbon. Right? So, and I'm not doing any particular length. I don't want them hanging down too far, but just enough to look really cute. <laughs> look really cute. Yeah. Of course, we want everything to look really cute. Just like that. And I didn't even ink the edges, and I should have, but I didn't. So there you go. There you have it, folks. Yay! And then just connect it all with a, um, you know, a book ring. Connect all your, all your pages. Oops. And it's done. And this would look really cute in like um, a little gift bag, or you can put it in a little box and give it to a friend. Put some love photos in there. All right. Thank you. 
How's your puppy Sam? Sam is naughty. She's very naughty, but she's good. She's growing like a weed. Um, we're home alone together all day, so <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's so bored with me. She's like, where are the boys? Where are my boys? Yeah, I'm not as fun. All right. I'm just going to turn off the recording for now, and I'll stay and chat with you guys after. Thanks, thanks everyone, for coming. Um, if you have any questions about anything that we used in the class today or any of the techniques, um, feel free to email me. It's Carrie, C-A-R-I, at primamarketinginc.com. Or you can go on to our Live with Prima Facebook group page on Facebook. It's just called Live with Prima Group. And uh, join us, and you can ask questions about any of the classes we do, the schedule, all that stuff. Um, so you're, if you're on Facebook, you're welcome to do that as well. All right. Um, we also have... Um, Art Venture coming up in Anaheim, California. That's January 8th and 9th, right before CHA. So six great teachers, six classes, all brand new January 2014 product before anybody else gets it. Awesome. So be sure to check out that as well. Thank you very much. So you guys have a great day.